The New Orleans Pelicans are going to have to wait to clinch a spot in the play-in tournament after their loss to the Los Angeles Clippers. No need to panic, but Willie Green definitely does need to make a few changes. It's the Monday episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with y'all on this Monday Breaking it down after the Pelicans lose to Los Angeles Clippers. No playing tournament just yet for your New Orleans Pelicans. It's coming. I promise. We'll talk about that part in the first segment of today's show. Willie Green cannot do what he did in this Clippers game again. We'll talk about what that is and why in the second segment. Then I want to clear up a few misconceptions about the Pelicans' picks in the upcoming draft. Why are we rooting for the Lakers? How can the Pelicans get two top four picks? Because, yes, they can get two picks in the top four. Four. That's coming up in today's show. Today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline.net, where the game starts. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube as well. And it's a fun time to be a Pelicans fan. Despite the loss to the Clippers, 119-100. We had a great time at Mid-City Yacht Club for the Pels 12 watch party there. There's going to be more coming. I know they're doing one for Memphis, and then keep an eye on that play-in tournament date. If it's an away game, it's going to be a watch party. If it's a home game, we hope, there's going to be a pre-game party. It's going to be a lot of fun. I will definitely be at whichever one it ends up being. All right, so let's look at the Clippers' loss here. 119-100 over the New Orleans Pelicans. Just kind of shrug, right? Like, this is one of those nights. First and foremost, the Clippers have pulled George back. They're trying to kind of get in the swing of things for the playoffs. They want to be in the playoffs, not just in the play-in tournament. So they're a little bit motivated. They want to come out and they want to try and win. And they're trying to kind of work through the kinks that you would do at the beginning of the season. But because Paul George has missed so much time, they're trying to do it now. So they're not going to just kind of treat this like any game. There is realistic things they need to kind of work through and go out and play hard to try and accomplish. So they were going to come out and they were going to play well. Second, L.A. nightlife remains undefeated. New Orleans in L.A. Friday night, Saturday night, after a big win over the Lakers. You think they went out and partied? They probably went out and partied at least one of those nights, if not both of those nights. Whatever. It's one of those things. That's an advantage of being one of those L.A. teams. And again, the Clippers are good. And sometimes you just have off nights. It happens over an 82-game season. Sometimes we watch these games. It's like, what the hell? They're playing so bad. How do you do this? How do you come out with no energy? It's an 82-game season. You're not going to be perfect and play at the right level every game. This is just one of those ones. Brandon Ingram had a night to forget. 3 of 11 shooting. 15 total points. He was rough. CJ McCollum, 7 of 18. From the field, just 19 points. Valanciunas did not have a good game. Eight points on nine rebounds. And Zubac kept scoring over him again and again and again. And everyone else on this team just couldn't stop the Clippers. They shot an insane amount of threes. 21 made threes on 48% from three. That's one of those things where they weren't going to regress. And it was just one of those games. And if that wasn't going to happen, what are you going to do? Sometimes it's just a numbers thing when you're hot like that. And look, the Pelicans gave them open looks. Yeah, but there were a lot of contested threes. Well, contested threes, I thought, that just went in. The Clippers just weren't going to miss in that game. And when a team does that, when you also have bad rotations, leave your starters in too long, we'll get into that stuff next, you're going to lose. But New Orleans is still in a good position. They're still in the pole position for the ninth seed in the playing tournament. So with the Lakers' loss earlier in the day, it reduced their magic number to get into the playing tournament from 2 to 1. So they still have every chance to get into the playing tournament. It's likely going to be Pelican Spurs. Which team hosts the game, which team's 9, which team's 10, is a little bit up in the air. After this loss now, the Pelicans are only a game up on the San Antonio Spurs. And the Spurs have the tiebreaker. But then you look at the schedules. 
The Spurs have to go at Denver, at Minnesota, home versus Golden State, and then on the road to Dallas on the second night of a back-to-back. That's a tough four-game stretch. The Pelicans, on the other hand, are at the Kings on Tuesday. That should be a winnable game. Home against Portland on Thursday. They should win that game on the road to Memphis and then back home, second night of a back-to-back against the Golden State Warriors. Memphis and or Golden State might not be playing for much at that point, and their seeding might be set. So if that is the case, they might rest some of their guys, and that makes it a little bit easier for New Orleans to get a win. So when you look at the schedule, yeah, they lost this game. Would have been nice to win. But the eighth seed was out of reach at this point. And so this doesn't really change much when you look at the upcoming schedule. If New Orleans can come out and do what they need to do against the Sacramento Kings, and they should, they win. And problem solved. They clinch the playing tournament spot. You win another game, that one against Portland at home, you probably clinch nine with that one, given that the Spurs have a tough upcoming schedule. So you kind of look at this game and all the factors in, and I don't think you really stress and don't need to worry a little bit too much about this one. Like There's a mild bit of concern, but I'm not going to read too much into this game. The Clippers are good. The Pelicans were just off. You lose. You move on, and you don't really stress too much about it. I look at the players, and yeah, Brandon Ingram's not going to have that kind of game. Six turnovers from him in this one. It's not going to be that case. These guys are good. We've seen what this team is capable of doing. Are they elite? No. Are they good enough to be the ninth seed? Yeah, I think that is a safe thing to really say here. So don't stress, don't read too much into this game, just just one of those nights. And like the Clippers didn't regress, right? Like they were just a good team making shots. Whatever, you just kind of move on from that one. So we're going to move on. And let's talk though about an area that, yeah, does need to change because we've seen this a little bit too much now. Some of the things that Willie Green is doing, I am not thrilled with. You probably saw them in the game too. Let's talk about what those are coming up, why they need to change, because you could argue he did a couple mo- he had a couple moments of coaching malpractice in this one. So let's talk about that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar ever. I absolutely love these things. I eat one every single day. I dropped one on the floor. My dog jumped on it trying to eat it. She loves them too, apparently, though that was a little bit scary. Um, Built Bars are delicious. I eat a protein bar. I used to eat them all the time. I travel a lot for work. I like to have a lighter lunch. I eat one. You know, I've tried various kinds out there. Some are just too chalky. Some are too dense some are metallic tasting none of them have just been like what i want i eat them because i want to eat a protein bar and then i discovered built bars and that's what i've switched to because if you're going to eat a protein bar you may as well eat the best tasting one and have one that you're looking forward to and that's what built bars are they're all covered in 100 real chocolate they taste just like a candy bar you're not going to even realize you are eating something healthy and you've got to give their puff bars a try first ever protein infused marshmallow they're fluffy they're light they're not just a protein bar it's really like a treat right i get sugar cravings i take a bite of a built bar they're awesome most built bars contain 130 calories four grams sugar four net carbs and 17 grams of protein i love the mint brownie i love the coconut brownie chunk i have the white chocolate raspberry cheesecake it's awesome double chocolate is great salted caramel is great you can get a mix box where you get a bunch of the different flavors and you can determine which ones you love the best. So go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off over at built.com. All right, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen every day. We're free and available five days a week for you all. Fun time being a Pelicans fan. And I know you're all tuning in. We are the sixth highest show on the Locked On NBA Network of all 30 teams. Locked On Pelicans was six, just moved up from eight because Pelicans fans are craving this team. We're having so much fun talking about them. So tell a friend about the show. Let's try and get into the top five. And now for your next listen, go check out the Locked On Now podcast, nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. You can't get all the context for a game from a box score. You need to hear the big takeaways from the people who are boots on the ground, as Antonio Daniel says, covering it all on a daily basis. Locked On Now helps you do that in like 10 minutes. It's awesome. All right, so we're not going to really talk much more about the game and the players and all of that from the Pelicans lost to the Los Angeles Clippers, 119-100. I do want to talk about Willie Green and some of the rotations that we've seen because 
I'm not thrilled with them. You know, this was a pseudo playoff game for New Orleans with a chance to clinch. And he basically went with like a 10-man rotation for the most part. And I don't understand some of the 10-man rotations that he did. What if I told you Devontae Graham played 17 and a half minutes in this game? We know Devontae Graham. We've seen Devontae Graham for the past couple of months. It, unfortunately, hasn't been pretty. Like, at all. He has been bad. And he played 17 minutes. And you saw when he was out there on the court that the Clippers were targeting him on defense. They were running play after play and hunting him because they knew they were going to be able to score every single time. Why is he playing 17 minutes when you have a guy like Jose Alvarado only playing seven and a half? Ten more minutes for Devontae Graham. Against the Lakers, right? Stuck with Devontae Graham over a guy like Jose Alvarado. What are we doing here? Devontae Graham, how many points do you think he scored? Dose. Two. He was one of four. He wasn't any better against the Los Angeles Clippers. He has been bad. Just like... Very, very bad. And Willie Green continues to play him over Jose Alvarado. I get it. They're undersized. But at least play the better undersized one, the one that gives you defense. Jose Alvarado also scored two points. It's not like he could do much worse or was much worse with what Devontae Graham has been giving this team, which is very, very little. And I wish it wasn't. I wish he was playing better. You know... I, I could understand it, but he most certainly isn't. His f- last four games, he has scored a total of 15 points. 15 points he has made in his last four games. I can do the math really quickly because it's not great. Six shots. He's made six shots. In the past four games, he's shooting 23%. What are we doing here? Like, What are we doing here? That's got to change, right? I, I can understand not wanting to play or wanting to play a guy like Najee Marshall over Trey Murphy, right? But Najee Marshall, for all good he does, getting downhill defensively was really bad in this game. Bad defensively, bad offensively. Why are we sticking the rookie Trey Murphy on the bench? Right? Najee Marshall has not been playing well. Let's give a chance to Trey Murphy, who's shown you things. Maybe not a full, complete game from him just yet, but you're seeing flashes of it. Put him out there on the court and at least get one of those qualities from him because in this one, Najee Marshall wasn't amazing. Got some buckets in there, was aggressive and got to the line. I like that, but defensively, he was rough and you needed stops in this one. Or playing both, right? Something along those lines. And then you have kind of what is the biggest, biggest problem here. The biggest part of coaching malpractice to me in this one. Why were all these guys, the starters, playing so many minutes in the fourth quarter, late in the game? This game was out of hand, basically in the middle of the second quarter. Why it shouldn't have taken until about three minutes left in the game, two and a half minutes left in the game, for Willie Green to wave the white flag and pull the starters. You had Brandon Ingram play almost six minutes in the fourth. You had C.J. McCollum play nine and a half minutes in the fourth. C.J. McCollum in this 19 point loss played 37 and a half minutes. Brandon Ingram played 35 minutes. Is that really what you needed to do? I get it. I'm glad he went out and played hard, but frankly, you probably could have just mailed this one in a little bit more rested and just moved on. But we've seen this, right? Some of these decisions from him. He sticks with these guys for way too long. Garrett Temple took forever to get him out of the lineup. Now he hasn't really played whatsoever you saw the extended Tony Snell love for a little bit okay he had a couple of moments but clearly that wasn't the right thing to do what is up with Devontae Graham I you've got to play him I believe to a certain degree but you don't need to have him play this many minutes and his minutes have dropped the past three games right before that he was playing closer to 30 minutes 26 27 minutes per game and the past three game, it's dropped to 16 and 16 minutes, 45 seconds, 15 minutes, 44 seconds, 14 minutes and 13 seconds. It's still too many right now with what he's giving you, which again is nothing. So they need to figure this out because this isn't working. Again, this is a pseudo playoff game for you. This was one where you could have gone with more of a playoff rotation and started to figure out what that is. 
What eight guys are you going to play? Maybe nine if there's foul trouble. But tighten up the rotation and go with your guys. Is it Jose Alvarado or is it Devontae Graham? You want to be in the play-in tournament? You want to host a play-in tournament game? You need to kind of make this decision now and go with it and let those guys carry you there so that they're kind of ready for that when the do-or-die game comes, I think. Are they going to be? And so I think well, as good as Willie Green is, and look, this is this is a minor knock on him, I think. But it is a knock, and this is something he struggled with this season. Kind of giving up some of his love for these guys. I don't know. This is one of those things that, that I don't particularly like. I think it's a bit of a concern. But hopefully Willie Green can make the right adjustment. And he definitely does. He definitely does. We've seen it. Sometimes it's a little later than you'd like. But he definitely tends to make the right adjustments. So I think that it'll all be okay in the end. And again, I think New Orleans is still going to get ninth and host a play in tournament game. Anything after that, win that, you lose the next one. Cool. We're, we're all good. It's been a success at that point. You lose the home game, you're not going to feel great, but still not the worst thing because you have a chance at some picks coming up. And let's talk about what those are going to look like coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. So you can find all the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championship odds, podcasts, and reviews for all the different leagues this season. Because BetOnline.net is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports and scores do you take unc plus four would have made a good bit there with what they did to duke at the very end of the game that game was awesome would have been more fun if you had something riding on it and you had a vested rooting interest in there would have been a great night if you were taking that unc plus four line so head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action over at betonline.net betonline where the game starts Thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast, Monday through Friday. We are here. No paywall, completely free, talking about this team every single day, and it's a lot of fun to be a Pelicans fan. So please, tell a friend about the show. You don't want your friend to be saying stupid things. I love my friends. I get these texts from them on occasion, and I tell them they clearly didn't listen to the show that day. So, don't let your friends be annoying. Just make sure they listen to Locked on Pelicans. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube as well. Leave a five-star review with a comment. Helps keep the show free and uh, available five days a week for you all. All right, so let's move on from this Clippers loss, the rotations, all of that. It it just kind of is what it is, right? Willie Green will figure it out. I don't read too much into that Clippers game. So, during halftime of that Duke-UNC game, I was watching that here over at Marquis Bar in the Bywater, I went on Tankathon and I spun the lottery. And the Pelicans ended up with the top two picks. And I was like, let's just stop the count right there, right? So, they can do this. I've seen a lot of people be a little bit confused about some of the protections and things like that. So, let's kind of clear this up on a day where we don't want to talk too much about the on-court action. So, the Pelicans have potentially two picks in this draft. The obvious one that you've probably heard the most about right now is the Lakers pick. Coming over to them from the Anthony Davis trade. It is top 10 protected to the Pelicans. They used this pick in that trade with the Memphis Grizzlies that brought Valanciunas here, sent out uh, Stephen Adams. The Grizzlies get it if it's 11 through 30, but the Pelicans get it if it's 1 through 10. Right now, the Lakers are slotted in at 8 So they can keep it if that pick lands at eight. They also get it if it jumps into the top four. And the draft lottery is for the top four picks. And that pick has a 26.3% chance to be in the top four. But certainly it looks right now like they will get the Los Angeles Lakers pick because it lands in the top 10 for how bad the Lakers have been to end the season. Simple as that. If somehow the Lakers get into the play-in tournament and win the play-in tournament and then go into the actual playoffs which is not going to happen. The pick would then not go to New Orleans, and it would go to the Memphis Grizzlies. If that pick is slotted at eight in the lottery and two teams behind them, say New York or and or Charlotte, jump them and land in the top four, and that pick drops to like 11 or something like that, or three teams behind them jump up, and it pushes that pick to 11 because of just some real weird stuff in the lottery, and there's very little chance of that happening. 
that means it would then go to Memphis. So there is chance that even if it lands at eight, there's there's possibility that the Pelicans might not keep that. And that also could mean if their own pick jumps up. So keep that in mind, too. It's not a lock that they get it, but it's nearly a lock, like 98%. So it's like 90. I'm doing the math right now. 93% basically. And then they have their own pick. This is the pick that they've somehow traded twice, but could actually still keep. This pick was used in the Devontae Graham signing trade. They traded it to Charlotte. It is lottery protected for New Orleans at the time. So this is, again, the same thing. If this pick is 15 or later, it goes to the Charlotte Hornets. If it is... So, so sorry, let me start that one over. Again, top, it's lottery protected for New Orleans from that trade. So if it's 15 through 30, it would go to the Charlotte Hornets. At the time, if it's 1 through 15, New Orleans would keep it. And then they traded it again in the C.J. McCollum deal. But they only traded part of it. They didn't trade all of that protection that they owned. They could trade the part that they had. They traded 5 through 10 to the Portland Trail Blazers. So... If the pick is 15 to 30, it goes to Charlotte. If the pick is 5 through 15, it goes to Portland. If the pick jumps into the top four, New Orleans keeps it. And right now, where they're slotted at tied for 10th, they have an 11.7% chance for that pick to jump into the top four. So there is a chance that they could keep bo- get both picks, and they could both be in the top four. It could be one and two, potentially. So New Orleans still has a lot of an offseason to go when it looked like maybe they weren't going to. That Lakers pick is almost assuredly going to be in the top 10. It would take a lot of bad luck at this point for it not to convey to New Orleans. And then if they make the playing tournament and lose in the playing tournament so that they fall into the draft lottery, well, then all of a sudden that pick has a chance to be a top four pick too. If they make the play in turn, if they win the playing tournament and make it into the actual postseason, that pick will then go to Charlotte. So that's where kind of the draft picks could fall. So there's still a lot of chances for New Orleans to end up in a really, really good position in this draft. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans, kicking off another fun week's worth. Again, tell a friend about the show, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, and I'll be back with you all tomorrow.